Hello everybody, I'm meteorologist Matt Gray and this is Video Brainstorm. Today we are doing a reader question. Remember you can sign up for the Brainstorm newsletter at kxy.com. I actually had a couple of people email me this question. What's the difference between hail, grapple, and sleet? And this is actually a pretty good question considering we get all of these and sometimes all of them in the space of a day around the Inland Northwest. And we'll explain why coming up in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and go through each one, how they form, and then what they look like so you can know what's fallen on the ground. So let's start off with the types of wintry precipitation that we get. And sleet is one of them. And basically the idea is that we have a shallow layer of warm air that's enough to melt those snowflakes that are coming out of the clouds. But then below that shallow warm layer, there's quite a much deeper layer of freezing air and so those raindrops they actually start to freeze as they are falling and so they become these little tiny little ice pellets that is what sleet is and you can see kind of the differences between that and freezing rain where there is some cool air but it's not cool enough for long enough to melt but it'll just melt whenever it hits something rain obviously very warm all the way to the ground then snow where there's not enough warm air at all where it stays is those fluffy light little snowflakes so where we're going to talk about now we're talking about grapple as well that's going to be something that has a very similar temperature profile to sleet but the process behind it is a little bit different in fact what we're actually going to be doing is instead of these kind of low stratus clouds that you see in the image here we're going to be talking about taller types of clouds with more vertical motion within them that's going to cause things like grapple and cause things like hail. So they're all somewhat related, but the processes are different enough and the outcome is different enough why they're called different things. So let's go to grapple now. So we end up with this once again, a very shallow, warm layer, and perhaps the ground is around freezing, perhaps it's not, but it's pretty close. Meanwhile, of course, the higher up you go, usually the cooler it gets. So above the freezing line, we have rising air and more vigorous rising air than perhaps we would in, say, a sleet type of situation. We end up with these uh, cloud droplets staying liquid as they rise very quickly into the upper freezing reaches of these clouds. And so that ends up being something called supercooled. After all, changing phase between, say, a uh, water and solid ice, that takes a lot of energy. Sometimes things are moving too quickly for that to change. And so we end up with what's called supercooled water. It's water that's liquid, but it's below freezing. And so that creates some very interesting types of processes. So we have these supercooled droplets and as they rum and bump into some of the ice crystals, the snow crystals, the crystallized little clouds that will eventually clump together and become snowflakes, well, as that super cool water hits all these ice crystals, they start to freeze onto it. And so you end up with these kind of fluffy, these fluffy types of, these fluffy little pellets almost. So they're very similar looking to say sleet but they have that kind of fluffy look about them that's why sometimes in some places of the country they're called corn snow as opposed to grapple which is uh, an unusual type of word that uh, you probably doesn't come up in everyday conversation so here we are we've got ice accumulating on these uh, little snowflakes and that result results in this like semi-soft type of weird hybrid thing that usually is pretty small because these super cool water droplets are weighing down kind of the, the the baby ice crystals that would become your big time snowflake they're just not there quite yet and so they end up falling to the ground and we get that little grapple or or corn snow as you may call it now if we flip over to summertime or other points of the year that's when hail comes into play especially if there's a really big difference between the temperature down at the ground and the temperature higher up in the atmosphere. When we get these broad storm systems that come down from, say, Canada or across the Gulf of Alaska uh, during, say, spring, summer, and fall, 
when we have a huge temperature disparity during with those summertime temperatures, that can create vigorous updrafts in these thunderstorms, vigorous rising air. And that's what we need for these, uh, these hailstones, especially the big ones, to form. So once again, we get these raindrops. They may start off super cool, but they quickly freeze as they go higher in the cloud and they end up forming into these little ice pellets. It's kind of like sleet, just in reverse. Except now they're all colliding with each other. And they're colliding with more of those super cooled rain droplets that we talked about. And because of these updrafts, they could be so strong that even as these hailstones are actually growing as more and more of these super cool raindrops or ice crystals or whatever are kind of hitting each other and they're all freezing up together and creating these hailstones. That's why often when you cut a hailstone, it'll have rings in it because all of that water is collecting and freezing together. So the updraft can be so strong that essentially these hailstones are just hanging there in the cloud. It's crazy to think about, especially when you see these really big ones that fall in places like the Northern Plains, like North Dakota, where they're the size of softballs. But that just shows you how severe some of these winds are moving upwards in the thunderstorm, maybe 60, 70, 80, 100 miles an hour. And yeah, that'll hold the big hailstone up there for a long time. Eventually, though, they do get heavy enough and then they fall out or perhaps the storm starts to weaken and then all of a sudden you've got a big core of hail that's falling down. So certainly when we talk about summertime severe weather, we definitely have to put hail in that category because the stronger the storm is, the higher potential there is for dangerous hail. Certainly nothing for us to worry about uh, during the winter time. The processes uh, are definitely a lot different this time uh, of the year as we're heading into winter, but certainly something, uh, something to think about here is those hailstones fall out of the cloud there as it weakens. So here we can compare all these side by side now. So uh, on the far uh, right hand side of your screen you've got hail so you'll notice especially with the bigger stones there'll be kind of this little icy core and then they may be translucent as it goes further out with these hailstones but they're they're a lot bigger than the other two and they're pretty solid in the middle of your screen you've got the grapple it's soft it's a little squishy can be a little squeaky sometimes and uh, you definitely know it when you see it because it's very unusual it'll make a little tink tink sound when it falls but it's also got that soft fluffy appearance and then you have sleet sleet you'll definitely hear it when it's coming down but they're very very small very little minute uh, little ice pellets so that's the way that you can tell the difference now why do we get a lot of this here in the inland northwest and really around the mountain west in general we get all these sorts of things well, one of the reasons why is the mountainous terrain so let me animate this and explain so the ground heats up and cools down a lot faster than the air does and when you have changes in elevation that means that there's parts say high above a valley that are getting warmed up more than they would if it was flat ground and so it's a very easy way for us to create temperature inversions to where there's a layer of warm above a layer of cool and that becomes a very stable type of situation it takes a, some movement from uh, bigger weather systems, take some windiness to kind of break that up. And so a lot of times around here, especially in the wintertime, we have long periods of these inversions. And so when a weather system does come along, before that inversion breaks up, that means a lot of times we get the hail, and the, or not the hail, but the freezing rain, and we get the grapple sometimes if uh, we get a more, some more vigorous cells. And then of course, the hail formation is a little bit different. More, that's more about bigger temperature differences. This is more about uh, the sleet and the grapple as opposed to hail, which we see a lot of times coming up in the fall, uh, winter, and spring. And take a look at our terrain around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We're surrounded by areas of elevation much higher than us. Basically, the valley along the Spokane River, at least relative to the region around it, is the lowest elevation around. So we're very prone to temperature inversions and areas and warm layers in the atmosphere that are above the ground. And that's what you need, especially in that first, say, thousand feet or so above the ground to create the conditions for sleet and the conditions for grapple, conditions for freezing rain as well. And really, that's the entirety of the, the region here around the Columbia Basin, all the inland northwest, where we're basically surrounded by mountains 
on every side so no matter which way the storms are coming from which way the weather systems are coming which way the wind is blowing we always have that opportunity to get some unusual precipitation where say it would be a lot different in the flatlands or if our geography was different so uh, you'll find a lot of times the geography your how close you are to a body of water things like that create all sorts of different things and are the main reason why we see these differences uh, in precipitation types and how the weather goes so hopefully that explains uh, some things about how these things form the sleet the grapple and the hail they all are frozen little chunks of ice but uh, they look a lot different and in some cases the process by which they're formed ends up being a lot different as well so hopefully this uh, helps explain if you have any other questions of course uh, we have a way to contact me on our brainstorm newsletter which you can sign up at at kxoy.com thanks for joining me on this video brainstorm we'll talk to you again soon